Hello and thanks for watching, I'm the Bearded Techie and this is another tech tutorial. Please, if you're new to my channel, if you like this video and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and if any of you all have a request for a tutorial video, please leave it in the comments below as well. I am happy to take reasonable requests for tutorial videos. In this video, I will be covering the entire D-Lid Relid process. I am demonstrating on the Intel Core i9-9900K. Over 9,000! which is a soldered processor. If you don't have a soldered processor, you can skip past the desoldering segment. I have separated the video into five short segments and we'll put the timestamps for each segment in the description below along with a tool list. And in case you are wondering, a tool list is a list of tools and supplies you will need to complete the task at hand. I will also link each item on the list for purchase. Before we begin, a short disclaimer, I am not responsible for any damage to your components in any way as this is an inherently risky procedure. If special care is not taken during this process, you could brick your CPU. If you are ready to begin working, I strongly recommend you have a clean and well-lit space to operate in. Make sure that you have all the tools and supplies at hand and within reach. Also, keep in mind that this is going to take some time. From start to finish, D-Lid to Relid, you could be looking at one to three hours of work time for a soldered CPU. However, unsoldered CPUs will be much faster as there is no desoldering process involved. Due to the level of care that needs to be taken while removing the solder, this is the lengthiest step. Oh, and one more thing, make sure to read any instructions that come with the D-Lid tool and Quicksilver kit prior to use. It may contain important information not covered in this tutorial. Okay, part one. First, take your processor, insert it correctly into the D-Lid tool. Next, insert the three screws and tighten to a reasonable degree. Next, begin turning the push screw slowly whilst taking care to maintain a firm grip on the tool. Note that there will be an audible pop when the IHS has come free from the PCB. This pop is especially loud and can be scary, but don't worry, this is normal and your CPU is okay. Part two. Now that you have the RTV cleaned off the PCB, it is now time to mask off the CPU die from the PCB. This is to hold the CPU in place and also to protect the PCB from the Quicksilver. Gently spread the Quicksilver over the soldered surfaces with the applicator. Now, get ready to wait. It will take at least an hour for the Quicksilver to penetrate the solder and it will need periodic agitation with the applicator. This is a good time to grab a sandwich and watch an episode or two of a Netflix show. After an hour or so, it is time to begin gently scraping. I am demonstrating with a small flathead screwdriver, but you could also use a hard plastic tool with a firm and sharp scraping edge if the use of a metal tool bothers you. You will feel the roughness of the solder, but you won't be able to see it through the Quicksilver. Use only the weight of the tool to scrape, taking care not to apply additional force when scraping. Go slowly and methodically. Continue until the tool can glide across the surface of the die and IHS smoothly and without resistance.
the Quicksilver will develop a coarse, grainy, textured look as the solder breaks down. Once you are sure the solder has been completely detached from the surface of the die and the IHS, be sure to remove all leftover Quicksilver and solder with rubbing alcohol. Part 3, Lapping the IHS. Note that if you don't plan on re-gluing or resealing the IHS to the PCB, you can skip ahead to Part 4, as lapping the underside of the IHS will primarily benefit only those who wish to adhere the IHS to the PCB. And I have prepared a graphic that demonstrates the difference between a lapped IHS and an unlapped IHS. Take note that the shorter the distance between the CPU die and the integrated heat spreader, the better. Attach your sandpaper to a thick piece of glass or a mirror as these glass surfaces are almost perfectly flat. I am demonstrating on a glass plate from a PC case. Label your grit so you don't get confused. Make sure to wet the paper and begin sanding on the lowest grit, giving equal strokes to each side in an up and down motion or figure eight motion for uniform height. Continue sanding until you see a uniform copper color appear. Now move up a grit to smoothen the surface. I initially planned on lapping the top of the IHS as well, which is why there is an additional piece of sandpaper taped to the glass, but the top of the IHS was already near perfectly flat and did not need lapping. Once finished sanding, you will need to polish the underside of the IHS with 3000 grit sandpaper until all surface scratches are buffed out and the surface is shiny. Then use the polish included with the Quicksilver kit to finish the surface of the die and the underside of the IHS. After both surfaces are polished, wipe thoroughly with alcohol wipes as the polish leaves a layer of residue. Part 4. Apply the TIM. TIM is an acronym for Thermal Interface Material, and the type of TIM I'm going to be using today is liquid metal. I chose liquid metal because it has the highest heat dissipation of around 70 watts per meter kelvin. Apply a very small amount and spread evenly over the die and underside of the IHS. If you are not re-gluing, this is the final step, and after completed, you can now install the CPU into the socket on the motherboard with the drop-in-place method. Part 5, Relitting. The final step is to re-glue the IHS to the PCB. This step is often debated and is considered optional. First, insert the CPU into the D-Lid tool, and then attach the Relid alignment guide to the D-Lid tool base. Apply a small drop of glue on each of the four corners of the IHS. Drop the IHS onto the PCB. Next, secure the clamp to the D-Lid tool using the two thumb screws. Then thread the large bolt through the center of the clamp to firmly secure the IHS to the PCB. Make sure to tighten snugly. Now, wait for the glue to dry as per glue instructions. One hour later. Then remove the clamp and alignment guide. You are now finished. Your CPU is done and ready to go into your computer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe, please like, please comment, and share if you can.